this is part two of a discussion we had two weeks ago. Are we overly optimistic about the Niners offense? We broke down the Niners defense in detail two weeks ago. We're going to go offense uh, this week. Yeah, it, just to give a, a refresher of it, basically it's trying to to aim small, miss small. So both of us have looked roughly at the the uh, schedule and determined that we believe the 49ers to roughly be a, a playoff team. I think that you came up with a, about an 11 and six record yeah. when you did your prediction. I've not done a formal prediction, but I put myself in that same range to where I think that they'll be one of the, the lower level seeds uh, in the playoffs. So how do we break that down? And the way in which I think you aim small, miss small is instead of looking at the entire team, start to look at the individuals that make up the team and what category do they fall into? Is it a, a high risk projection or a low risk projection? And what we ended up with the defense was about 50-50 split. We looked at 16 players in total, the 11 slash 12 starters. If you look at nickel versus a linebacker on who may actually start the game, k Williams or uh, Drake Greenlaw, Covered those 12 and a couple of backup defensive linemen because they're key rotational pieces. And we ended up split eight and eight with um, eight people in the higher risk category and eight in the three lower risk categories. And so we're looking at the offense in the same way. And those four categories are someone that played well last year. And therefore, you're just expecting that they will play at the same level, maybe a little bit better this year. They were good last year. They'll be good this year. That's not a real big jump. That's just saying that that person will be who we thought they were. That's not much of a projection. The next one, an improved play or expanded role projection to where someone had an off season last year and we're hoping for a bounce back. That's a bit of a projection, right? If you go by what they did last year, it wasn't great. That's probably what they'll do this year. If you say it's going to be better, why? Uh, and then the third one would be the recovering from major injury. The fourth would be a rookie unproven transitioning to the NFL. So point being that in that first category, it's better than a 50% shot. In those other three, it's probably closer to a 50-50. So again, we had basically split on the offense. Now, going into the defense, you want me to go through and name a couple of names as I have them in that first category? You can let me know if you agree with uh, those placements. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the first category where it's not much of a projection, we're just saying they're going to do as good, if not better, than what they did last year. I think it's fair to say Trent Williams – will do as good, if not better, than he did last year. I think that's fair to say, yes. Yep. Absolutely. Lakin Tomlinson. This one we may disagree on. I think that other than the um, couple of glaring misses that he had, he played solid last year, and I expect him to play solid this year. Uh, yeah. I, playing next to Alex Matt could help. Could definitely help. Um, he's getting to be a little older, about 29. He might be declining. but it's certainly within the realm of possibilities that he maintains his current level of performance. Yeah. And I mean, to, to solidify your point over mine, which I hate to do because I like to be right, but the 49ers could have extended him this off season and they didn't. So perhaps that indicates that they're not as high on him as it may seem from what you hear them say about him. Typically you follow the money and that tells the truth about a player. Yeah. Uh, next up, Brandon Ayuk. I think it's reasonable to assume based on what we saw in his rookie year that he will play as well, if not better in this season. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle Juszczyk, again, another player that I expect consistency from because he's put it forth. Now this one, you can make a case that he's had some injury issues and consistently missed games, but I still put him in this less risky category. Yep. I would agree. I would agree. All right. I would agree. These are the, the next ones. So that's only four, four players in the, the least risk category. So for me, everyone else falls into a higher risk category, one of the other three. So immediately I was surprised to find myself in this scenario where on defense I had it split evenly here. I'm leaning toward the offense being a little bit more of an unknown. So players yes. that I think need to improve or take on an expanded role, obviously Alex Mack. He was not with the team last year. Therefore, he's taking on a vastly expanded role within the 49ers offense, leading us at center. And I think it's fair to question at his age, at his slightly um, decreased performance last year, it's fair to wonder, does he have anything left in the tank? Yeah, I mean, because I don't think the Falcons thought he did. They didn't pay him. They didn't pay him. I mean, the Falcons aren't good. They know him very closely and they were like peace 
Now the Niners for them, he's an upgrade and they he knows the system. So, I mean, it makes sense, but that doesn't mean that he's not declining. So I'd like to see that if he could play as well as he did last year, I don't even know if that's good enough. He needs to kind of bounce back. He needs to bounce back and he needs to solidify the center of the line, which then has that domino effect to the remainder. Because I do think that that instability at the center position has been the most glaring weakness for the 49ers consistently for several years now. The the reliance upon Weston Richburg when it should have been known that he was not going to be able to come back. Maybe it shouldn't have been known, but it seemed apparent from a fan base that we shouldn't have been relying upon him to get healthy and we did, that really set us back. Because that interior pressure, especially with a guy like Jimmy, who's just a bit of a statue in the pocket, that interior pressure is critical. That allows defenses to just stuff the pass game. No doubt. So yep. that's a big piece. Uh, another one that fits in here, an, another member of the offensive line, Mike McGlinchey. I think we all can agree that yeah. he needs to play better this year. Absolutely. First round pick, uh, took a big step back last year. He could improve this year and get back to the level he played at two years ago when they went to the Super Bowl. Be helpful. Yes. I think yeah. we all expect that he can and will play better next year. I think we all definitely expect that. The other one that falls onto this list is not a player, but a position. And that's the sad part of it is we don't know who that third wide receiver is, but whoever the hell it is, they are going to have an expanded role on this offense. So first, someone has to win that job. And then they have to perform at a high level for the entirety of the year. So that right. to me is a pretty big risk. Right. No question. No question. All right. Recover from major injury or recurring injury issues. Jimmy G, obviously, you got to put him in there. He's the presumptive starter for week one, but certainly to expect him to play 17 games this season seems a little outlandish. I mean, he didn't make it through two last week, last year before getting hurt. And the main difference between <clears throat> this offensive line and last year's offensive line is Alex Mack. We'll see about Aaron Banks. I we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Because he's got to beat out Daniel Brunskill, who's solid. Very so solid. We'll yeah. Yeah. Uh, Raheem Mostert on this list, again, got to stay healthy for us in order to, to really consider him to be a lock this year. I think that it's fair to assume with his running style, very upright running style, he takes some pretty big shots uh, and seems to suffer from some of the soft uh, tissue injuries as well. So I think it's fair to put him on this list as a recurring injury concern. No question. Debo Samuel, pretty similar to to Mostert. What I just said for Mostert applies to, to Debo as well. I, it's not a knock against either one of those guys. To me, both of them have that physical play style that leads to more injuries. And I wouldn't trade one for the other. I would rather have someone who, when they play, dominates like that. Yeah, and, and Mostert's a running back. Running backs get hurt. Yeah, that's fair. Debo plays like a running back. Running backs get hurt. Yep. Yep. Another guy who at times plays like a running back and gets hurt because of his physical playing style, George Kittle. Exactly. Plays like a running back. Running backs get hurt. Uh, that's the way it goes. But, yeah, they really do need him to play 17 games. They do. Yeah, yeah. that makes a big difference. All right, so that, that fits into the recovering uh, from major injury. So, again, four players in there. So you've already offset the four that you felt pretty good about that you just needed them to do what they did last year. Right. Now, rookie translating to the NFL, obviously that's that's key. Aaron Banks, Trey Sermon, Trey Lance. Those three, all unknowns and all should play a big role on this offense, even if for Trey Lance it's just – uh, packages coming in. That's still going to be very important for this. They offense. could all be starters by the end of the season. So, yeah. Yeah. And they are the future of, of this team as it goes forward. So mm -hmm. pretty critical and unknown in particular with the quarterback with such a limited sample size from college in lesser competition. Right. I think that's definitely an unknown in transitioning to the NFL. Yeah. And then the, the last one is for, Oh no, that was the last one. The rookies translating. So that comes out at, at 10 to four, for me, if, if you disagree with a couple, that could be varying a little bit, but it seemed that we were on the same page for most 10 to four in high risk versus low risk. Yes. So yeah. that now, now that we've said it's pretty even money on the, the defense leaning towards higher risk on the offense. I think that the, the, the season does in fact hinge upon the offense's ability to, to put together these pieces and a lot of unknowns and really start to put out an offensive uh, output much, much more like the 2016 Falcons uh, or the 2019 Niners than what we saw last year with the wild inconsistency game in, game out. 
Yeah, there's a lot to like with this offense, but in, unless two guys in particular, George Kittle and Debo Samuel, play the majority of the season, they're going to struggle no matter who the quarterback is. Mm. Those two are way too important to play eight games or five games. They got to be there the whole time dominating because they have the ability to dominate. Other than that, I just feel like we might be a little overly optimistic about this team. There's, there's a lot of players who are crucial who are in this high-risk category. Yep. Kittle, Debo, Bosa, Verrett. I mean, geez. They need a lot to go right. And, and that's a weird juxtaposition for me to be in, to envision a team where you have four players that are the best in the NFL at their position – and a team that I'm unsure is going to be able to put quality product on the field this like year. The like the Anaheim that's... Angels of the NFL. It's kind of crazy. That's right. It is kind of crazy. So, I, I mean, we are hoping. But until the preseason, I agree with you. I think we're being a little overly optimistic in thinking that this is a playoff caliber team. And if it's I... fair to wonder about Debo and Kittle in particular. Like, are yes. they just the kind of guys who are going to miss time? Yes, and unless you have some off. rookie yeah. that steps up on the offense that that replaces that type of production, if if either Trey lights it up this year, then then that wouldn't be as much of a focus. Debo or a Kittle missing time, a Kittle, Kittle missing time wouldn't be as big of a deal if you had someone else that is creating offense. But I don't know that it's fair to assume either of those players will light it up in their rookie season, particularly early in the season. So the Niners, I think, have to really hope that the offense remains healthy to start the year until some of those rookies really can add value and overcome some of the deficiencies that you may have when players do miss time. Because that's inevitable. At some point, some of these key players will miss a game or two. That's football. Yep, absolutely. So maybe we're a little over overly optimistic about the offense, but they have big-time potential. It's just a lot of things have to go their way.